was fun. That's what I was like. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Um, I'm Molly Knox Osterheide. As you said, you know me from the Witch Boy series and from The Girl from the Sea. Um, but tonight I'm here to talk about my upcoming graphic novel, The Deep Dark. And I also want to shout out Amanda Maciel, who has been my wonderful editor on this project. The Deep Dark is the story of Magdalena Herrera. Mags her friends if she had any friends. She is on the cusp of adulthood, but in many ways, she's already an adult. She works a part-time job, but she has a complicated affair with a classmate. She cares for her ailing abuela. But in other ways, she knows that she will never get to be a full adult with a life of her own. This is because of the monster that lives in her basement, a creature that she was born with, that she must feed daily with her own blood a weight of guilt and obligation, a curse that also burdened her absent uncle, that means her life will never really be her own. All of this changes with the arrival of Nessa, a friend from childhood with a vibrant life of her own who is intent on connecting with Mags, despite all the blocks Mags has put up to keep people away. Nessa brings back memories of lost childhood happiness and also what took that happiness away, the time the monster escaped from the basement and what it did and everything that fell apart in its wake. As a tentative romance blossoms between these childhood friends, Mags's carefully constructed world begins to topple, and Nessa's own secrets catch up to her. There is a chance at a new day and a bright future, but first the characters must pass through a deep, dark night. So I would love to talk a little bit more about this book, um, but there was something else that felt a little bit more pressing tonight, um, and so thank you so much for the space to talk about this. Um, I recently learned that Scholastic has been self-censoring which books it sends to school book fairs based on local bans and the sort of vague state laws that we're all familiar with, with that are meant to intimidate. This means that many books, specifically books from black and brown authors, books about racist history and racism, LGBTQ stories, disability, activism, and other quote-unquote controversial topics are not making their way to the schools where they are the most needed. Now, I've had some internal conversations with the people I know at Scholastic to try to understand the reasoning behind this policy. It seems to be a really good faith effort to protect teachers and librarians, and I understand the reason, but I felt the need to stand up here tonight and, and say this instead of talking about my book, um, because I think this is a great miscalculation. Um, it doesn't come across as anything but an attempt to compromise with these frankly fascist laws. So I'm standing here tonight, and I'm entreating Scholastic, specifically the Book Fair Division, to stand up for your authors, your books, and most importantly, the kids we make these books for. Because books are very literally lifelines. There are a million examples. I think every single one of these books will be a lifeline in its own way. I'll talk about just one way. Um, trans and non-binary children specifically have a really elevated suicide list, risk. According to the HRC, over 50% of them have attempted for the simple reason that they cannot imagine a future for themselves and they cannot see themselves in the world. When we send books that depict that future and that depict what their world could be and what their life could be, we are sending a lifeline. And I know I've gotten the emails from parents, but especially from kids about how they carried a certain book and how it became almost a talisman, how it was a friend when they had no friends, safety when they were not safe, and an escape from a world that was unfriendly. So when you allow a single school official to make a choice, no matter what motivates that choice, to sever that lifeline, and when you make it easy for them to do so, it is very literally a matter of life and death. There's a battle being fought over the content of children's books in America right now, and it is not a battle that I think anyone here has started or chosen. It's being waged by a very small, very loud group of bigots who understand a truth that we all in this room also know. Books and the ideas they contain are powerful. This battle is being fought, but it is not even close to over, and I can't see Scholastic's recent fair policy as anything but a capitulation. So what I am standing here tonight entreating you to do is to not give up. Please recognize your strength as a powerful company. Please recognize your strength as individual people within that company, and please be brave and strong like so many of the heroes of the books that we publish here. Um, please don't capitulate or compromise with a small and unrepresentative group that wants to destroy any stories they personally dislike. I am asking you to be an ally to authors like us, to the vast majority of people who do not support book bans, and most importantly, to the kids who need these books more than any of us can really imagine. I know that Scholastic is already doing this in many cases, and I am so grateful and proud to be publishing here. 
Um, but I'm specifically responding to this new fair policy and asking Scholastic to reconsider this and to treat your books equally, regardless of content that other people have chosen to politicize. Um, again, I wish I didn't need to say this. I don't think that any of us particularly want to be in this fight, but we are, and the choice in front of us is how we respond. So thank you so much.